the Soul series from From Software has given birth to a genre, one focused on difficulty, interconnected locales, a mix of melee and ranged or spell combat, and little to no handholding. Dolmen, the first title from the Brazilian team at Massivework Studio, is unashamedly following much of the early Souls formula to a T. Has this team managed to make a mark for themselves in the action RPG landscape, and is it worth your time and money? Let's find out. The game takes place in a reality where space travel is in its infancy. One of the few planets humanity has colonized is Revion Prime. A catastrophic accident has occurred on this planet rich with the Dolmen Crystals. These beauties can allow different dimensions to interact with each other and are the key to space travel. It's your job to figure out what happened and how to fix things if that's even possible. The story begins with a short CGI trailer opening and then mostly gets told through audio communications during gameplay. It was interesting at first, but it quickly devolved into something barely coherent. Trope-filled writing and bored-sounding voice acting in the English dub was matched with plot points seemingly pulled out of thin air, and overall, it was a completely forgettable experience, both lore and story-wise. It's missing that key mystery, the ingredient in a Souls and especially Elden Ring game that makes them so uniquely good. It's not well-earned in this title and it is in those through a mix of environmental, boss, and item description methods of being told. The lore here comes mostly through written text that pops up on the screen when you activate a station, and the bosses have little to zero personality. Missing the mark of what makes this genre great permeates through every single area of the title, especially the combat. Using the tried-and-true control scheme of the Souls games for the most part, the game ends up feeling more like a 360-era knockoff. Button-wise, A is your interact, X uses energy to heal, Y activates your energy mode for some elemental damage melee shenanigans, the B button is your dodge, which works on a stamina meter, right bumper is your light attack, right trigger is your heavy attack, and a pull of the left trigger switches those buttons to ranged attacks. Left bumper is the quite important parry-slash-block button and the window for parries is rather generous. Left and right on the d-pad swap between equipped weapons for each hand, up changes your ranged weapon, and down uses your your battery pack. That battery pack refills your energy bar, which, much like mana in the Souls games, is used for healing, ranged combat, and your energy mode modifier. Stamina dictates how long you can run, if you can dodge, and if you can attack like you would expect. Overall, the system is fine, but none of it feels very good to use. The controls are okay on the 60 frames per second performance mode, but felt terrible in the ray tracing enabled 30 frames per second one. Enemy AI is both easily exploitable and quite often terribly unfair. The difficulty in the game is poorly balanced with a few options available for the inevitably forced upon you groups that you'll have to face. If you told me this game was from 2010 and running with FPS boost enabled as a back combat title, I would believe it with how this gameplay feels. None of the mechanical depth is here from even the original Demon Souls, and the crafting system on offer for loot is thoroughly underwhelming. You will want to match elemental damage and protection to your current enemies, and with 7 overall item sets and a handful of similar feeling melee and rage weaponry on offer, I quickly just found a playstyle that felt a bit broken and stuck with it. Unfortunately, most of the time, my progress was halted due to a massive spike in difficulty. Two options would arise to get past it. First was going back and grinding previous enemies for a nauseatingly long amount of time, and the second option, which occurred frequently and at random, was that the enemy AI would break and I could easily kill the foe as they stood there like a statue. The game also takes the souls leveling, with six different stats to level up, system and pairs it with a full crafting system instead of having actual item drops that you then upgrade. What is completely broken about this, though, is that you can't access any of it at the game's bonfire equivalent. Instead, you must constantly go back to your ship and walk around it to access the upgrade bays, and those loading screens kill the flow of the exploration, and oh yeah, so does the level design. One of the biggest draws for any good Souls-like is its level design and aesthetics. 
This game fails miserably at both, with level design straight out of the mid-90s in a boring, dreary, and dull set of very boxy levels. The levels interconnect just to do so, as it ever rarely comes up as something useful, because you can instantly fast travel to any found checkpoint, which is where you'll also respawn. It feels like a puzzle box without an actual puzzle, and instead, after an hour, you'll click interact on a door and are thrown into a longer than it should be loan screen. You wait five seconds for the textures to load in as you go, oh wow, I'm in this area I don't need to ever be in again. Again. Early on, you are stuck inside various blocky environments that reuse the same few textures over and over. Eventually, and not too long after, I couldn't force myself to play any longer, you reach the surface and are met with visuals straight out of a bad Gears of War clone. Not Gears 5, because that would be gorgeous. I mean areas that look straight out of the Xbox 360 original. Getting back to that checkpoint system, it is the bonfire equivalent as in you lose every nanite, aka soul, that you have along with any current dolmen fragments, and more on those in a bit. After dying, you'll respawn at the last used checkpoint and you have to run back to your corpse to get your loot, of which you only get one try. The issue here is often checkpoints are hidden out of the way, and not cleverly so that you'd think to look for them. Quite often, I had to run around an area for 20 or 30 minutes before I finally found one. Teleport back to the ship to upgrade, then teleport back. A few of the boss runs were a solid 2-3 to three minutes from the nearest checkpoint, even without a single enemy in between that I had to fight. There was no reason for this other than poor planning. At least none that makes any sense to me. Why make the player run for over two minutes every single time they die on what was an incredibly cheap and difficult boss with multiple one-hit mechanics? Another cheap and overly used mechanic is enemies falling on you from the ceiling, often in multiples of two or three. Either as a glass cannon or tank build, your character will feel like they're a toddler fighting a bull when grouped up on. You, nay, zero tools are at your disposal for dealing easily with multiple enemies at once and they can stunlock you constantly into taking multiple hits for no good reason. Doing this combat while dealing with the boxy, jagged level design drove me crazy. The game does have a solid soundtrack. I quite like the opening screen theme and most of the boss music. The problem is it rarely plays outside of those two areas and is a quite barren audioscape overall. Sound effects in the game are not properly faded out either. Whenever you do almost anything, the audio file just abruptly cuts out most of the time. There's no natural fade to the sound. I do hope this is something fixed for the full launch, but it stood out big time during the review period. Attacking a wall with my axe and hearing a ka cut out with no fade and before it had fully played, the expected sound oddly put my teeth on edge. I did run into a few falling through the world bugs in the very beginning, but after that initial area and a restart of the game, it didn't happen to me again. What did happen a lot was the aforementioned AI breaking and enemies simply standing there as I wailed away on them. I do hope this is something remedied with the day one patch, but I won't be sure until it hits. Another major miss is the multiplayer co-op system. Using that dolmen crystal currency that you lose upon death and have to recover, which is also a random drop, you can only call in help at bosses. That is it, there is no invite a friend and play co-op. It uses this random drop to call in help or go help someone else seemingly at random as well. The system was not turned on until a few days before launch and was so limited that it felt pointless because you have to be at the boss to activate the call in travel out system and is yet another missed opportunity to make the game actually fun. In conclusion, Dolmen wants to put its mark on the action RPG genre with a potentially intriguing space horror tale that never really goes to space and isn't all that scary. It never feels good to play, broke on me constantly, and was an ugly maze of bland and blocky corridors. Retailing at $39.99 US at launch, I simply cannot in good conscience recommend this over almost any other game in the genre. Thank you so much for watching, and if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it hits that YouTube algorithm beautifully. And we'll see you here next time on Xbox Era.